Yo, it's Guido coming at you with the tactics stuck. Hey, who wants to watch paint dry? Who raise your hand? Do it. I want to watch some paint dry. We're gonna watch some paint dry right now. Right look, if you're gonna play Artie, I've always said do it right. So let's talk about Artie. This is for my Artie player fans out there. I know there's well, I don't know. There may be one of you. It's possible. Maybe one. But we have Night Dog. He's in his M12. He's top tier on a 357 on a great Artie map. And holy cow, he's a tier 7 arty with tier 5 to shoot at. This should be an unholy massacre. But let's see what happens here. He's got his team kind of spreading out. Nobody really going over to the east. That's not good. A lot of guys headed to the back corner in the southwest. And here comes the Tiger. So let's talk about overhead and this G view, the G key that does that view right there. Actually, we're going to talk about that later. Night Dog, you shoot and you scoot. And that's good. That it, No, now it's bad. All right, so <laughs> initially, I'm going to actually let this go. I cannot pause this. Otherwise, it will take us four hours to get through this. You move backwards, which was good, and you moved laterally, which was good, and then you drove forwards, and you were basically very close to where you started from. Very, There you go. Very close to where you started from, which means that if the enemy is countering, he's only going to need a splash to get a piece of you. And guess what? Because of this dispersion, there's a high likelihood he just plain old hits you anyway. Because you're not really out of his dispersion circle. So you got to travel quite a ways if you're going to move. If you're if you're really going to shoot and scoot. And you're going to do this multiple times in this game. So I'll note it when we get there. But a couple times you just barely kind of shift around. And it, you might as well not move if that's what you're going to do. Also, if you're going to do it, you're going to shoot and move immediately. Don't, don't sit around and watch your work. You go backwards and then forwards. And then don't really get out of the dispersion circle. So it's kind of a, a courtesy move. But that's really not going to do a whole bunch for you. So back to the G view. You seem to really like that. Uh, I don't. Unless they're very stationary or I'm trying to pick somebody in a very strange position. And sometimes on back slopes when I really want to aim in. But look how I'm going to need my Dramamine after this. Whew. Look how many little shifts you did. Just, just watch him from this angle. And I find lead fire on moving tanks from the God's Eye view much, much easier. Now this is one of the places where the G view can be okay. And you really do shift around quite a bit with it. I would pick one or the other and try to get good at it, rather than shifting back and forth so much. Now this is a good spot for it, especially if he's... Oh, holy cow, why did we come out of it? I think you were waiting for it to get completely zoomed, then he went down the back slope and you figured, oh, I don't have the shot. A couple times you're going to take shots where you're not fully zoomed and accept it. A couple times where I thought you needed to accept one, which was right there. You don't. Blind shots are good. You get all the experience with a blind shot. I think he's probably, if he was moving forward, he probably got past that point a while ago. Maybe waited just a little too long. Now we're going to move. We go backwards. That's good. Laterally. And then, and then we pull right back up to where we were, basically. <laughs> so that's a little rough. The other thing I want you to watch what you're doing here, and this is for everybody as well, watch how much he works at the edges of his field of regards without stopping this paint drying episode. See these white lines right there? See how he's always working? at the edge of it, and it's going to happen for most of the replay. Use your WASD, A and D, use your A and D key, just reminding you artillery players that WASD does something. Use your A and D key to shift your hole, because the hole is what changes that field of regard if your artillery doesn't have a turret, like a, say a 53-55. It will have a much wider field of regard. This is one of the smallest field of regard American TDs out there, so you've really got to be careful. That was an opportunity maybe to get two for one. You shoot in there and you don't move. So it looks like you've decided that the other guy's not countering and you're not going to move. I'm going to tell you that I've done that before myself and guess what? You never know when they're going to decide to start countering. Especially if their team starts to lose or they don't have targets. You start to get less guns in the game. They have less targets. They may be more inclined to start looking for you. And feel like, oh wow, look at this guy's hammering my guys in the middle. I need to start looking for him in the reloads. And that's what I would do. This has a relatively long reload. Stu G is going to die. A relatively long reload. So while you're reloading, I would go to the common places. But again, without stopping the paint, paint drying. Which would be here. 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 And potentially over here in about 2 or 1. And I would watch for about 10 to 15 seconds of the reload to see if I can see a tracer. I may not take the shot, but I at least note that's where he is. And then I'd come back and start looking for a shot. And I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not really sure why we're in and out of G so much here. Just, it's a little bit crazy. 
There we go. This guy's going to die. Yes, there we go. And we're admiring our work. So right here, I would go ahead and go to God's Eye View, and I'd go start looking during this portion of the reload for one of the artillery. Because it just doesn't matter. Swinging the and tracking stuff right now, I still have 10, 15 seconds. And about right now, I would shift over to the O1 after I look for tracers, and I'd have plenty of time for it to zoom in and take this guy down. And well, I'm not really sure why we're not making a decision here. Probably could have taken any one of those shots. And then we take the harder shot, but it hits anyway. So there you go, RNG and artillery. That's how it rolls. That is how it rolls. This is all wasted time. I'd be looking for tracers right here. Now this is a good example. Notice how the Type 64 is right on the edge of your field regard. As I shifted my cursor over to him, I just shifted the hole just a little bit to put him more center of mass or the center of the field regard. So if he did start drive, started driving forward, I wouldn't reset my I wouldn't reset my dispersion so much. Oh, one goes down. That's good. Let me take a couple more Dramamine here. Whew. Holy cow. All right. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> now, again, we're working at the edge of our field of regard. And watch as you get to the edge. It's going to reset your... Oh, oh, there it goes. See? You just went past the right side, and it reset your whole dispersion. And now we had to accept the bad shot. If at the beginning you just shifted your hole slightly right and put those two tanks more in the center, then you wouldn't have shifted your dispersion right there. Once the gun gets to that gun stop, or that, that guy just came off the right side of it. I think this 100Y is a bot. I turned around and looked at it during the first view. He's never left the circle. He does shoot. I think he's got a kill. He hit somebody. I want to say he hit the... Has the 1S showed up yet? No. I think he's going to hit the 1S. He is shooting. <laughs> but he hasn't left the... The circle. 3001D. That's all time I'd have spent looking for tracers. I'd really like to know where that artillery is. So later on, when things aren't, go when not much is going on, I could go over there and look at it and go, hey, maybe I'll see a tracer and be able to fire immediately as I see the tracer. If you're looking for tracers, don't move your cursor around. It makes it much harder to to gather the uh, the little white flash especially depending on your resolution and your screen. Just kind of hanging out. And this is what I'm talking about. Just be calm. Be calm, my son. All right, now we're moving over here. T67. There you go. You get a piece of him. That was strange, really, because I didn't see the, the splash on the ground. But he did take damage. I don't know if you actually directly hit him and and just didn't do that much damage, like maybe you directly hit his gun. That was very strange. I don't you don't see that very much. And it could be an it could be an artifact from the replay. Now that's how I like to go after guys. I thought that was a good shot. It just happened to land at the very outside of your dispersion. There you go. I think that was the uh, the 100 Y actually just hit him for 400 something <laughs> from the circle. Has not moved. I do not like the G view for trying to splash guys. It's very difficult, but it's going to actually work out really nicely for you. I was thinking that just as you fired, I'm like, yeah, I don't really like using that for uh, for splashing guys behind things, but never mind. It seemed to work out. You can see that that from that view, it's much easier to place your shot to hit people behind things, so you can have it land somewhere that the splash goes into them. The G view is much more difficult to do that with, in my opinion. This is a great shot. Watch this. T67's on the run. Night Dog swings it over. He's going to get away. Let me just fire away here with almost full dispersion. <laughs> Direct hit. <laughs> oh, man. If, if the T67 player saw that shot, he'd be very angry. Very angry. And now we're settling down and looking for the artillery. We're going to have, again, issues with the, with the stop on the right side with the field of regard. That could have been mitigated if we would have centered them once we see them. The Cromwell's going to come up and over here. Night Dog's looking for the artillery or the M4, wherever those guys are. There we go. See how he's right on the edge? You're zooming in, zooming in. You go to G. Oh, oof. Down he goes. No, he survived. Dang it. Notice how far he had moved already on a shoot and scoot for him. And you still got a piece of him. So reference your 
moving after firing earlier. And you see how you're on the right side of that field regard? You're going to reset your dispersion here pretty quickly. All right, I'd have led that just a little bit more. As he went in that water, I'd have moved that pipper to about here and fired away. I think you probably landed behind. Yeah, you landed behind him. It went to the back anyway of the circle. That didn't help. So I think I did definitely be in God's God eye, God's eye view here, and then shift your hole to the right, so that this last spot is in the middle of these two white lines. So that last spot would be in this part of these two white lines. Oh, sorry, I took control of the uh, took control of the camera. Couldn't see what you're doing. Well, he's not up there. I, I'm pretty sure he didn't climb up out of that pit. Yeah, there you go. He's making a run. Oh, down he goes. All right, man, nice job. 1,742. Actually, it was more, I believe, because there was some blind shots in there that did damage. And remember that blind shots, you don't share the damage, the spotting damage on artillery, so that does help you out. He has a really good game here, four kills. I think it was over 2,000 damage and 406 while stunned kind of deal with the artillery. Well done. I got one more for you because we're not done watching paint dry. If we're going to do artillery, then we're going to do two in a row and get the uh, most bang for our buck. <laughs> All right, people. Second example. Second example. I've applied a second layer of paint. We're going to watch it dry. We're going to watch it. <laughs> if you hear rain in the background, that's because it's raining. Those are the, the tears of the tank gods who are just irritated at artillery. But who do we have here? Let's see this shot. Does he take it? Yep, there we go. Probably would have shifted that a little bit left to give it a better chance of getting behind the building. But this is Wiley Coyote, PhD, the Doctorate of Coyotes. And being Wiley, he is in his GW Tiger? Yes, GW Tiger P. Tier 8, bottom tier artillery. And this is interesting. He is on Fisherman's Bay here, spawned into the south, and he's the only artillery. I've seen this a bit lately. It's happened before, but it seems like it's happening more. Maybe I'm just noticing it. I don't know. Probably just noticing it because I've been playing a lot of wheeled vehicles, and I'm actually slightly irritated when there is no artillery. Why? Because I'm massacring them right and left. But anyway, he takes a shot in there. Enough of my false... What is it? False... Modesty? That's not false modesty. That's just bragging. Just enough of my bragging. <laughs> the 110 E3 dies. Very good. That's a good kill for Coyote's team. But you'll notice that over on the east side, he's got trouble. There's just an IS-3A and a Tiger II, and they're getting pushed pretty hard by the enemy team. And the rest of his team uh, has called a meeting in the southwest corner that Wiley was not invited to. <clears throat> he did not get the memo. So he is over here trying to help his co-worker, the IS-3A, who's doing actually a pretty good job right there. Now, one thing I'll say about this, Wiley, unlike Night Dog before, he uses a lot of the top-down view. And I would have investigated where to shoot a little earlier than that. You eventually get there, and then you drop some, some damage on him. That's good. And the IS-3A is beating up the poor PR, but then the 5120 shows up and says, I'm going to put an end to all this foolishness and get rid of the IS-3A right there. And Wiley Coyote is now feeling very alone. Now, observe, observe artillery players, that even though he is in the slowest tank known to man, or very close to it anyway, I don't know, is, can this thing beat a TOG in a straight drag race? I'm not sure. He has pressed... I mean, where is it? W. The W button is in play. Amazing. And he's repositioning, i.e. running away. Well, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> running away, repositioning, retreat, tactically retreating to another offensive position. He's doing something like that, but he is getting out of there. If the enemy team pushed in any kind of hard map, ooh, maybe he's going to get seen. That 50 TPPR prototype guy is big trouble. Big, ooh, that's very helpful. Very helpful. He dies. He can spot nobody while dead. And we're going to be very careful. Do not hit the hurricane. Very well done. Very well done. Do, <laughs> do you spot? Are these the models from the from World of Warplanes? I wonder if they're the actual models. Or a smaller resolution or whatever. Don't know. 
So he's very careful not to break through the squadron of hurricanes, but he is going to run over their petrol and their oil. And then he's going to go buy these, what are these trucks anyway? What kind of trucks are these? Uh, they got to be historical, right? They're all about historical stuff here. And finally, we're going to turn around. Now, I think I would have turned and taken a shot earlier than this, but he's very careful to get to a bush to put this giant bus somewhere near a bush. That works. And he'll come out and look for taking a shot. Yeah, I would prioritize the WZ. Watch this shot, though. This is very interesting. Okay, that guy disappears. You, Where'd that go? Did it go so far down the hill that we missed where it hit? Or did it actually go into that poor 5120? <laughs> I think it might have gone into the 5120. It went over the WZ. It could have hit the WZ as well, but it seemed like the line went past where that guy was. In any event, it didn't kill anybody, but his team's not doing fantastic. They're down 5-7. to seven. And the meeting is still going on. It's still adjourned in the southwest corner. There's a 1390 kind of spotting the guys who might be pushing the cap, which is not a bad idea. He can't really move too much, but they get a couple kills, and all of a sudden it's 7-7. So I think, Wiley, you probably could have set up to shoot a little bit faster than this. I know you're worried about being out in the open, but just like anything, getting your gun in the game is important. There's a long pause from when you set up to where you go into your overhead view to take shots. And I'm not exactly sure why it is. I'll, I'll try to point it out again here. There's a couple opportunities, I think. You can go into your overhead view and then use the WASD key to move your hole right and left. And you just pay attention to where your field of regard is in order to line it up. But you're already moving your cursor over to where the shots are going to be. So you can start looking around at the terrain and what's going on, where the tank is, and line, start lining up or at least deciding how you're going to line up your shot. Let's see if I can find another example here. Now you're going to have a little bit of trouble with this bunker here. In general, artillery doesn't care too much about line of sight, except when it's close to an obstacle like this and you can't actually get the arc up and over the obstacle. So you're just a bit too close to this right here. There's an example right there, just a long pause. I don't know if you're looking for the key or what's going on there just seems to take a little longer and you're you're fixing to blast it right into that so just a bad positioning decision this is a very slow artillery so making little bad positioning decisions like that can can really slow down your ability to get shots out and you've been reloaded for a long time so you could have at least taken some kind of wacky prayer shot at the Lynx 6x6 and been, been reloaded by now now there's the Leopard PTA and again the long wait I'm not really sure what's going on there you don't elect to take this shot. I just shot him right there. Just just take it. Get the splash out of it. No big deal. You might even get lucky and knock him out. But you definitely would have hurt him. So I would have certainly taken that shot. This is going to be a bit of a standoff here. So you might as well take shots like that. You're going to get reloaded. No big deal. So we're just kind of waiting right here for quite a while. Down 7-8 now. So when you're playing Artie, you said, hey, uh, spot there. Uh, in, in general, I would avoid saying anything in Artie. Uh, be quite honest, it irritates people. <laughs> Some lead fire there was definitely in order. Your points will take it, right? You need spots. But the problem is, these, this is a camping team, right? They've been hard camping the whole time. You're not going to entice any of these dudes to get out and start getting spots for you. So you're going to have to hope the enemy team pushes in. These guys are moving around a little bit, so they will get lights. The enemy team is has you stuffed into a corner, so they're working around trying to figure out ways to get you guys lit. No real reason to antagonize your own team. Or maybe that's your game within a game and you want to. <laughs> there's, there's always that as well. Always that. So Wiley's in the corner. The 1390 dies. That hurt. That hurt. But the good news is, boom, down goes the link. Six by six. That's very good. Now, you've both got a Leopard PTA. That's probably the best spotting tank left on the board for each team. The Scorpion comes around the corner, loses his mind. Not really sure what his plan is here. Wiley actually auto-aims that guy. All right, that's a skill for you artillery players. He just put his cursor on. Did you know that? If you have straight line of sight, you can auto-aim with an artillery. And that's really great, because what does it do? It aims center of mass, which is going to minimize the problem with your dispersion, or at least as much as you can, with an artillery right there. Did I mention it's raining? I'm not sure if I mentioned it's raining. If you hear it in the background, it's raining. That's the tears of the arty gods, because I'm doing a artillery <laughs> replay. <laughs> Again, that long pause, it's very strange. The scorpion dies right there, gets killed by the 103-0. 
and now we've just got four of them. They've got a platoon of barns that have not been shown up, have not been shown up, have not shown up. The other JT was right there. He takes a beating. And we're going to wait till he gets to a nice spot. And unfortunately, we land a little short. That's just kind of one of those things about artillery. But we do get a chunk out of him, and that will whittle him down just a little bit. Unlike Night Dog before, you'll notice that Wiley's a little bit better about keeping them in the middle of his field of regard. That's so hugely important with this tank, especially the German ones, and the, to a large extent the Russian ones. They have a really narrow field of regard, especially at the high tiers. So it's very easy for the enemy tanks to get to the right or left and make you reset your dispersion, which can be super annoying. Again, you're dealing with this big building in front of you. So you, be quite honest, I'd have been up here nearly the whole time, up in these trees. That way you just mitigate all that messing around with these buildings right here. Bunkers, I guess. There's that long pause again. And this time you do not fail to shoot this guy. I probably already shot. Notice that you're having an issue. That dead tank was blocking your shot there. So you either needed to shift left a little bit or what you just did here, wait for him to come out. And that nukes that dude. Very soft tank, the Leopard PTA. So remember, Splash is going to do a lot more against that guy than most tanks. Not very good armor on that thing. Which again, I, I've gone over it several times. One of the reasons why I would have taken that splash shot much earlier, just knowing that he was going to take significant damage. Now the two barns have pushed in, and they're working on it. Oh, I'm probably not showing what you're doing. There we go. And now we're going to go into this auto-aim thing again. We're trying to mess around with it. There we go. We got line of sight. We got him aimed. And we're taking a nice close look at this guy. I think you had that shot. I'm not sure. Maybe you didn't. Yeah, it might have been pointing into it. It looked like it was red, so maybe you were aiming at the rock. You need to shift left here because you're going to come up over the rock. The good news is that that barn doesn't really know you're there. Ooh, oh, boy. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I mean, you get a lot of time to aim it on this guy, and boom, dropping 1,300, and then charge him like an animal. No, run. And uh, he was a bit irritated by that. You got him stunned for 27 seconds, but still takes you down. And we end up with a win out of this. That barn goes down. Nice job, 2,700. I think there was some extra damage in there. I want to say it was a 3,000 damage game or so. I'll show you guys the results at the end of that. But more good examples of what to do. So what did he do that was good? He, he moved, got out of the way. He supported the side that was having trouble and helped whittle it down. He moved when it was time to move. He took shots when he needed to take shots. I think he probably could have took, taken a few more shots in there. Was moving at times when I thought I would have taken a shot and then move. So... Once an RD is reloaded, you really want to be shooting as soon as possible. Nice use of the auto-aim capability right there. As well, a couple shots were not taken that I may may have taken myself as well. But nice job, Wiley Cody. Thanks for sending that in. And take those two things together. I talked about most of the things you're going to do with artillery. Most of the things you're going to do with artillery with the addition of that auto-aim thing, which is hugely important. It's also very good if you're being circled and you're turning your hole to try to keep your gun online. Just auto-aim them. So you don't have to mess around with the aiming piece of it, and at least it's center of mass. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in, and we will see you.